Terry Millionaire, Davin Ford, Ted DeSoto. Rise and shine, camper. Breakfast is served. Store brand Fruit Loops. Everyone's favorite. Not hungry. You should eat. You look bad. I'm in an electrified tiger cage with nothing but a paper-thin mattress and a blanket that might as well be made of razor blades. My only companion is my ex fiance And yet, my looks bad is still... Pretty freaking amazing. You know, I'll leave the tray. You might change your mind. Millionaire, Devin Ford, Ted DeSoto. What are you doing? Using the Arya Stark revenge actualization method. Everyone on this list has betrayed me, and everyone on this list will taste my revenge. <clears throat> Balthazar Montcrief, Lucky Les Mocker. Do you know where my father is? No. Chet Phillips, oh, Terry Millionaire. Bet you didn't see that coming. Hey, I didn't put her in here. Excuse me? You. I didn't put you in here. But I expect you to get me out. I know you're here on some lame-brained hush-hush side quest. All of this reeks of a classic Anders plot. Is that what you think? I'm on some deep cover assignment for Zelda? Maybe I just got a better deal. And the chance to mend a broken heart. Ugh. You may be a Fairweather fan, a chaotic neutral who's always out for himself, but this Ford business, this dark EMF, it's not you. It's too... cruel. Too cold. So, one-time offer. Get me out of this cage, and I'll help you bring all this down. Eat your Fruit Loops. I'll be back at dinner. Chet Phillips, Terry Millionaire dog from old yellow it's so nice to see you two together again i always thought it a terrible shame you two crazy kids couldn't work things out she tried to use me to take over the world and so did you by the way her memories like the corners of my mind well our mind report phillips ford how long were you standing there just a moment why ever do you ask no reason Okay, prisoner report. She's fine. And how about you? When I turned the corner, you looked as though someone had just walked all over your grave. Sure you're not slipping? Not me. I'm in my prime. I agree. He's never felt better. Although, to be fair, my experience with the body is more limited. It wouldn't be much for me to ask Mr. Millionaire to reassign you to a less, mm, stressful detail. Devin... May I call you Davin? Uh, of course I can. Anyway, your stressful is my cool down. You know, if it isn't abundantly clear from my patronizing tone... You mean your voice? I was not in favor of assigning you to this detail. <gasps> Color me shocked. So I'll play along with the big boss's take your has been to workday charade as long as it pleases him. But I got my eye on you. Oh, <laughs> ho, and I, you, Ford. And I... Who can I play? I've got my eye on... Uh, wait, I can do better. I've got my eye on you. I see no way this plan can fail. I've got my eye on you. Mission Rejected. The story of the world's most secret agents. The Backups. Tonight's episode... Zero Dork 30. And with my fourth move, I'll send the medic to Legos and... Boom! Yellow is eradicated. I wonder why I have so much trouble convincing people to play this one. Good morning, Skip. Ah! Whoa! Careful, Gloria! Don't back up! Ah! You... Oh my oh, god! No! Oh, Skip, I'm so sorry! No, I... no, 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 no! Rats! Oh, yowzers! Skip! Oops. Ah! I'm just going to stand perfectly still. How does that sound? Ideal. Let me restack my Pioneers of Attack collection here. There's the base game, Ocean Expansion, Junior Edition, Jumanji Crossover. Hold on. Are all of these board games yours? Haven't I seen your whole collection? You've seen what I keep at home. I had to stop by my storage unit to pick up the rest of these babies. There must be 500 titles here. 512! I've been a collector for decades. My uncle gave me a copy of Scooby-Doo Monopoly for my sixth birthday, and I haven't looked back. Morning, all. 
Whoa! Looks like Joe Manganello's bachelor party in here. Oh my goodness, Skip! Is this... Dare I even voice the dream? A gaming mission? At the very least, gaming adjacent. Ooh. Bowden, Gloria, pick a title that tickles your fancy and start researching. You know, a laid-back, sit-around-the-table mission is exactly what I need to take my mind off the intense preparations for Abbott and Costello Vampire Hunters. The line load has been unlike anything I've ever dealt with. Especially the whole who bit first, what bit second, I don't know bit third sequence. Section Chief Anders, I wasn't expecting you or I'd have my deluxe edition of Spymaster ready. I'm so sorry. Never mind that, Skip. Enough's enough. What's the big joke? The what? Don't play coy. She's been in my office for 30 minutes and hasn't made a single quip. What's the prank? Section Chief, if I had any knowledge of a prank, practical joke, jape, antic, leg pole, or caper, I'd be the first in line to stop such tomfoolery. Now, who is it whose behavior has you so on edge? Hey, guys, have you seen... Oh, there you are, Z. I wasn't done briefing you on my analysis of the EMFCOM subnetwork encryption. What fresh hell is this? McGrath, what's going on? She's freaking me out is what? So, you guys remember how Skip's heartfelt pre-recorded just-in-case eulogy for me got leaked to my family, leading to our almost being crushed under the rubble of a collapsed Pacific Northwest high school? It... Does ring a bell, yes. I found the gap in our subnetwork security that let someone release Skip's Do Not Send folder. Great security convention there, by the way, Skip. Well... Do you also leave a sign on your running car that says Door Unlocked? Only when the valet isn't immediately visible. At least she's quipping again. Some semblance of balance is returning. Anyway, it was a gaping hole in our controls, and she, who must not be named exploited it. I wonder if releasing those files was a test to see if she could gain control of the network. I'm sure it was. It's how she injected the malware that let her and the Legion of Doom pull an Andy Dufresne out of Supermax. Something about it all still sits wrong with me. But anyway, good work finding that flaw, McGrath. We should get IT busy patching it. That way, well- It's patched. I walled it off good and tight. Then what's on the rest of those eight single space pages? A full analysis of any other breachable gaps in our security. I got some good advice from Phillips while we were in Milwaukee, so I'm doing everything in my power to make sure she never, ever gets into our network again. So if I circle the first letter of every sentence here, it won't spell out Zelda sucks or anything? It's legit, and pretty good work if I do say so myself. All right. If we're all just going to go along with this, I'll give it a try. We'll see how long it lasts. Meanwhile, as per your recommendations, I'm going to review our, um, penetration test strategy. That's a thing? Pinky promise. We'll see. We'll see. It's briefing time! Pull up a stack of train ticket bonanza expansion packs. All right, I'll sit on Athens through Madagascar. I've got Nantucket through Zanzibar. And let the games begin! The man you're looking at is General Sarkis Semyonov, the former Supreme Military Commander of the Republic of Sergebia. Wait, I know that name. Is he the man who, back in 2010, initiated an unprovoked military campaign to conquer that region of the globe? Yep. I remember the made-for-TV movie about this guy. There were two, actually. I lost the HBO version to John Hamm, while Fox made him the hero and cast Kevin Sorbo. Under Semyonov's command, Sergebia's army routed all but one neighboring nation, the tiny coastal country of Val Verde. The Valverdans were able to repel Sergebia's attacks until international sanctions forced their retreat. Driven from his homeland and in disgrace, Semyonov took up permanent residence on his personal yacht in international waters. And from the confines of said yacht, embarked on a uniquely different career. Board game designer! This guy invented Panic at the Castle? And Fallen America post-apocalyptic survival? Oh, Uncle Riley might need me to get an autograph. Smash it up, head straps, Sherlock Holmes in space. This guy's a legit nerd. No wonder he tried to take over the world. And he's just announced his most ambitious game to date, Battle for Valverde, a hyper-realistic turn-based war simulation. Well, at least he doesn't hold a grudge. What makes Battle for Valverde unique is that Semyonov has no plans to market it. He developed it to help him play through his emotional wounds. Mmm, game therapy. Very common in the hacking community, too, for getting over one's failures. Or, you know, so I've heard. So we've got a disgraced general in his board game empire. Excellent premise for Prestige Cable, but where do we come in? Sergebia is one of the most secretive nations on Earth, but Battle for Valverde is rumored to accurately depict its army's size and strength, including details about 
The Lynx 382 Battle Tank, the Sergebian Army's pride and joy. Our allies in the region would do anything to get their hands on such intelligence. Our mission is to get up close and personal with Battle for Valverde and smuggle home its secrets. And just how are we supposed to get our hands on it? By getting our feet on this! That's Semyonov's yacht? Sweet Steve, win! Looks like someone made the Encore Las Vegas seaworthy. This is the Smaragd de Mer, or SDM in elite circles. She's 175 meters long, worth $657 million, and as we speak, is docking in Baltimore's Inner Harbor, where Semyonov has invited some of the world's top gamers to a day-long session to playtest Battle for Valverde. It will likely be the only time anyone else will ever see it. Further complicating matters, the SDM security measures are renowned worldwide. Any personal comms off the boat will be jammed. Any voice channels on the boat will be monitored. So my question stands. How do we smuggle out all that information? With the unintentional assistance of these three people. Casey O. Reardon, editor-in-chief at Blarney Stone Games and inventor of Weidel, a Wordle clone bought by the New York Post for an undisclosed amount. Siobhan Murphy, the world record holder for points acquired in a single tournament game of Train Ticket Bonanza. And Gordon Grimsby, a.k.a. the Warlock of War Games, the world's preeminent turn-based strategy player. These are the three players Semyonov has invited to playtest Battle for Valverde. And since he's lived the past several years at sea, he's never actually met any of them in person. Not unlike an M. Night Shyamalan trailer, I think I see where this is going. With McGrath's help, we intercepted the electronic invitations that Semyonov sent for this event. Use Evite in 23, and you get what you deserve. While they were made blissfully unaware at home, a disguised Bowden will attend Semyonov's playtest as Casey O'Reardon. Top of the morning to you, lassie. A disguised Gloria as Siobhan. Oh, Guinness! Tax Havens! Dropkick Murphys! Relax, Siobhan is Irish-American from Downers Grove. Oh, thank God. And myself in disguise as Grimsby. Meanwhile, McGrath will infiltrate the lower decks of the SDM and hack the communications network. So, I'm on my own for this mission? Alone? Solo? Unchaperoned? Indeed! Sounds perfect. Gloria, Bowden, try these on. Oh, are these new Warby Parkers? Even better, the new Studebaker's Wileses. Oh. These glasses contain a miniature recording device and antenna. I thought you said communications off the boat would be jammed. Which is why we're going to broadcast on the boat. While we playtest Battle for Valverde, our glasses will transmit the game data to McGrath, who will use the boat's communications to relay the data to EMF headquarters. Semyonov will never even know the data has been compromised. Section Chief, are you okay? You look shell-shocked. I'm fine. Briefing finished? Yes, but you really do look like you maybe... McGrath, I just wanted to apologize. Your analysis was spot on. I googled penetration testing, and indeed, the first result confirmed everything you mentioned. Is that why you look so stunned? No. That's because I also clicked the second result for penetration testing. And really, really shouldn't have. Good morning, Baltimore. Every day is like Bo! a... Oh, Undercover time. Sorry, those shaman tunes burrow deep into your subconscious. There she is, the SDM. Either that or somebody dropped a Disney resort in the water. Game face is on. The man we're about to face has a worldwide reputation for relentless, ruthless remorselessness. Oh, let me look at you. You come all this distance, I cannot believe it or help to be tickled on my funny bone, which is not really a bone, did you know that? This feels neither ruthless nor remorseless. Though it could easily become relentless. I am your host, Sarkis Semyonov. But you can call me Sarkis, or General, or Mr. Semyonov, or Mr. General. Uh, No, not that last one, that's weird. But otherwise, whichever you prefer, come on board, please, with this luggage and this... Oh, oh, what is this? A bottle of West Cork 8-year single malt for a old man. A gift from the Emerald Isle. Mr. Casey O'Reardon, touched I am beyond what you can even know. But I no longer drink. These years spent at sea have been devoted to the improving of the self and the findings of joy in the tiny things like flowers and birds and horse jockeys. But no worries. My personal assistant, Helmet, will be more than appreciative. Helmet! Chop, chop! (laughs) That is one supersized personal assistant. You must have been the tallest in your grade, laddie. Helmet has been my loyal attaché, 
The man that is my hand on the right since he joined the Sergabian military after flunking from Remington Clown College. A good clown he might have been, seeing as how he is also mute, but alas, the day they taught the car, no one else could fit. <laughs> but enough all the times and Bridgewater. Helmet will take your things, <laughs> and we will get to the gritty of the nitty battle for Valverde. Hey, after we check on the motors, you wanna play some cards? No, I can't play cards on a yacht. Why not? The captain's standing on the deck. <laughs> <laughs> My kids love that. Uh, well, yeah. at least I know I can distract this crew with a fuzzy bear joke book. Okay, map says the communications room is this way. Uh, on a 175-meter boat, can't the crew spread out? Locker. Good. Did you lower the gangplank for the fourth guest, like Helmet asked? I do everything Helmet asked the second he asked it. Ever since the charcuterie incident. Oh, oh yeah. Is that poor bastard still in the hospital? Day 42. They were able to save his ear. Oh, they found a nice frame for it. I... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Fourth guest? Are you ready to feast your gaze upon my laborious apples? Um, Sarkis, we may have a relationship through the gaming community, but we really have only just met. I don't think I'm ready to feast my gaze upon- Oh! Fruits of your labor! Might that be what you mean, General? Yes, of course. Uh, the labors of my fruits. That is my meaning. The side effect of living on a yacht, you see. My language is foreign or not what they could be. Nonsense, Sarkis. You're improving. <gasps> oh, surprise! Casey, Siobhan, Gordon, say hello to another luminary of the gaming industry, Nicole Normandy, world gold champion and owner of history's highest Scrabble score. Thank you, Sarkis, and I reiterate that primo is not a word. Sarkis, I'm surprised, as there were only the three of us on your evite, how did- I haven't owned a computer since the Commodore 64 went out of fashion. Sarkis called me personally. It's so nice to finally meet all of you face to face. Oh, thank God. I mean, uh, uh, good, uh, thank good, and I'm glad you are also well, new friend. Now, all the greetings and hi hos aside, let's play. Helmet! The board! So, you're a top-flight maritime communications security array, huh? You don't look so tough, bub. Heh, <laughs> this is state-of-the-art. Maybe if the artist finger paints. Sola McGrath is flying high. I'll be into this thing and... It, that's not what I expected. Maybe... Okay. How about... Alright. Maybe there's a little more to this than finger paints. That's okay. I can try and bypass... Well, at least buy me dinner first, damn it! Okay. I was wrong. Literally every function on this yacht is entrenched behind this maddeningly recursive, insanely creative... Okay, hold on. Here it is. Wait. The programming interface is a frickin' chatbot? What lunatic would code this way? Welcome to the QA2 Custom Security Module. No. I'm Athena O'Brien. No, no, QA2's no, 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 are you- your one-stop shopping source for maritime communication security. Ugh. Command not understood. Then let me explain it, you bitch! To access command routines, speak the core password. It's only my deepest, darkest secret. Oh. And should be on the tip of the tongue of anyone who knows me well. Okay. Could be a couple of but things. But remember, this isn't Facebook. No redos or resets. Speak my password or forever hold your peace. Solo McGrath. Bye and high. <laughs> That is quite a game board. Sarkis, I didn't expect the game to be a one-to-one -one scale. Well, as the great philosopher Sir Mixalot was fun to say, I like big boards and I cannot lie. <laughs> you get, it's not what he said really, but he's close in a way. Sarkis, in all seriousness, this board is massive. It is a game where one side invades a country that exists. By its very nature, it's going to be bigger than a box of bread, yes? <laughs> ah, perfect helmet. Extra biscuits and frankenberries for you today. Ah. Here are everyone's rule books. Very clever, Sarkis. A six-year-old child could understand these rules. I couldn't agree more. Someone get me a six-year-old child. I can't make heads or tails of these. Groucho jokes at a time like this? I defer to the classics under stress. Let's get the rolling ball moving. 
Our game board is 30 feet by 30 feet. Enough to give us geographic coverage of that insignificant pipsqueak fly on the sweaty neck of the world that is Valverde. Not that I'm not over it. I hold no... Oh, no, not at all. Oh, yeah, no, oh no, else no, you yeah. hold it. Really very healthy. One of That's you will right. play as defenders of that smelly, pestilent scab of a nation. No hard feelings. Working to repel the assaults of the noble and very handsome soldiers of Sergabia. Not that it matters their attractiveness, but it's true nonetheless. Nicole, your reputation as a defensive gamer is far and wide preceding you by going ahead of you, so... You will defend Valverde. It will be my honor. Uh, um, my reluctant duty. Gordon, Connor, Siobhan, you will work together as the three pillars of Sir Gabby and Might to conquer pathetic, verminous Valverde. Not... Uh, if you have anything, anything against, against them, them, got it! One of you will lead our land forces, another the sea, and a third the air. And here are your game pieces. Familiarize with everything yourselves, and let's on the game get! To access command routines, speak the core password. Yeah, not quite It's yet. only my deepest, darkest secret. Okay, I, should be on the I can't do much from here, but that hack should at least well. bypass the one try only rule. The password is... Cristados. Don't shut down, don't In- shut down. Uh. Command routines, oh. speak the core password. Yes! It's I only my it. deepest, darkest secret. And now... And should be on the tip of the tongue of anyone who knows me well. Now I get to hear her voice over and over until I get it right. The password is... Big stinky lying liar person. Incorrect. Worth a shot. Alright, let's play everyone's password. least favorite game it's show. How well do I know Athena? Secret. I was much more placid about being a fake board game master when I didn't have to play against a non-fake board game master. Right? This mission just got, like, Gloomhaven complicated. No need to panic. This is a friendly playtest. Nicole likely won't treat it as a tournament. It'll be okay. Oh, Gordon. Hmm? Uh, oh, uh, yes, yes, Nicole. Finished familiarizing yourself with the rules, have you? Only just. I love the complexity of the combat resolution, and the introduction of the chance rule really spices things up. It reminds me of a little title called Pacifism the Game from a few years ago. Remember that one? Pacifism the Game? I can't rightly say I'm familiar with that title, and I do consider myself a connoisseur It was a simulation I spent years developing to depict the horrors of trench warfare, a way to really make the player feel the inhumanity of war. And then your company released Trenches of Fire 1917, one week ahead of us, with almost the exact same rulebook, glorifying the terrors of World War I and selling five million copies. So, uh, you never released- And stand accused of ripping off the great Gordon Grimsby? You cost me millions of dollars and my life's work as an avowed pacifist. Which is why today, I'm going to bring my tournament level A game and humiliate you in front of Sarkis and your peers. I've memorized these rules and you are going down. Is it too late to say I'm sorry? Down, you, going. So... Panic now? It'll still be fine. Our only goal is to see and record the Sergebian military pieces. It doesn't matter if we win, just that we... Wait, are these all our units? All righty dighty do. It's time to play the music. It's time to light the lights. Um, Sarkis? Quick question. Are these really all the pieces the Sergebian side gets? Ah, uh, 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 someone only skimmed the rule book. Here, start of game. The player is representing the handsome and virile defenders of the Republic of Sergebia. Begin with a token force. Only by surviving waves of resistance will the High Command allow more valuable units onto the board. So everything depends on how you play. You want more pieces? First you win some! Fun, yes? Okay, now we can panic. How about... Mom Vengeance. Incorrect. Operation Hestia. Incorrect. D- death to JJ Prescott. Incorrect. By Curious. Incorrect. And kaboom, you're out. I've never seen anyone further from winning a game. Ha. The peaceful pacifist sovereign nation of Valverde takes down another Sergabian aggressor. Casey, where was my air support? I was Kevin for you as best I could until I noticed a huge gap in the Valverdean defenses. That was no gap. It was a trap. Nicole had two surface-to-air missiles planted to take you down. I know that now. Why didn't you warn me? It wasn't communication phase. Here, page 179. 
Sergebian military units may only exchange intelligence once the effects of all combat rounds have been resolved. And meanwhile, you left my only two tanks open to a full-on assault by bazooka troopers. I must admit, I expected more from a team of O'Reardon, Grimsby, and Murphy. What have I won now, Sarkis? <sighs> Five combat turns in a row. It is bringing back memories that are not of the good kind. Would you like to stop? Or perhaps grant Games Master privilege and open up all units to the Sergebian military. No, I will not stop. My therapist says this is a thing sort of needed by me for the, for the self-actualizations or something. And Gordon, these are the rules the Sergebian High Command made me abide by, so you will now abide. Sarkis, I must ask, why would the Sergebian High Command not- Not just give me the tools I needed to win because they were a cowering room of spineless cowards too worried about embarrassment on the world stage if the Lynx 382 tank didn't work. Sniveling invertebrates who doomed me to humiliation, all of them. All right, a break of five. And when we reconvene, I can't wait to see how Sergebia attacks the curiosity and my cats. One of them is killing the other. I'm off to powder my nose between ass whoopings. Oops, I mean rounds. Valverde forever. <laughs> oh, pipe down, Ronald McDidn't. Time to reassess. We need to unlock those advanced Sergebian pieces, and our poor play is starting to arouse suspicion. Well, if you could take your nose out of the rulebook long enough to provide offshore missile coverage... The rules are very explicit about ranged sea-based weapons when the fog roll is above ten. We're not here to stick to the rules, Skip. We need those pieces. Well, it would help if you didn't dart off at every fake vulnerability like a hot-headed Hollywood hero. They made me an offer I couldn't refuse. And in all the excitement, I couldn't remember if I fired six shots or only five. This won't get us anywhere. For this next round, let's all agree. Bowden, be a little more risk-averse. Gloria, consider the weather when staying within range of my missiles. And I'll focus on the game, not the rulebook. Deal? Deal. Deal. No, there no, no, it's right here in the on page 626. But I didn't last move my Because you chose and not to during the edition of round. Speed. Potatoes? Ink. Capelet? Ink. Gunai Sweet and Thrupple? Ink. Buy and Proud? Ink. Alliteration? Ink. Soft Lips? Ink. The liar! Ink. Backstabber, Ink. phony, Ink. traitor, Ink. cheater, tart breaker, dream maker, love taker, don't you mess around with- Ink. To access command routines- I don't know you at all, do I? I know your file, your headlines, your greatest hits, everything you put out there, everything you let the world see, but what's inside, I don't know. No one does, and you just lord it over us, laughing your- Hold a damn phone. To access command routines, speak the core password. The core password. Thank you for correctly identifying the QA2K's master password. A joke. That's your secret. It's all a joke to you. What can I do for you today? Oh, quite a lot. First, display all communication subroutines. Done. And second, display your source code. Well, that round could have gone better. Well, at least you sated your need for speed. No matter the rules or the plan. I saw the opening. I took it. No matter. Oh, this is a disaster of the highest order. What is wrong, Team Sergevia? You're not playing like the smartiest of the pansas. Maybe. They're just not that good. We agree we are playing suboptimally and need to discuss an alternate strategy. What he's saying is give us a minute. One more round, Sarkis. Can you give us that much? Well, I mean, I've got this primo dark spot till the morning, so... It's not a word. Thank you. We're just going to utilize this breakout room over here. Well, it is closet, but uh, you do the you. Okay. After 16 rounds, we haven't once eliminated even a single Valverdin defender. That's because the game mechanics are impossible. It's almost as if... That's it! Sarkis never defeated the Valverdins, and this game is based on his experiences. I see what you mean. The rules are based on his philosophies. If his philosophies couldn't defeat Valverde, how could anyone else using these game mechanics? So what we need is to sidestep the rules. I can't believe I'm saying this, but go on. Obviously, we have to stick to them in spirit, but there's got to be a way. Some dumb, shouldn't-in-a-million-years-work way to breach Valverde's defenses. Something Monty Python-esque in its absurdity that no one will Bo, see. you're a genius! Really? Because when Variety said that about my turn in R.I.P.D. 3, Right to Remain Violent, 
I'm pretty sure they were joking. Sarkis, ready for one more go? Ugh, we have all the time in the world, just like they sing and say in that sad 007 movie. Did you like that one? The ending. Oh. Reset the pieces, please. Ready for another lesson in real game theory? We are, and this time, I think we've got an answer. Okay, the game board, she is set. Your first move? We pass. Pass? It is my very own game, and I don't know if this passing or not is a thing. Nowhere in the rule book does it say it isn't. And your nose in that book has been stuck all day. Your word I take. No movement then? We're as frozen as the Oscars audience when Chris Rock comes on stage. Okay, no move. Valverde? We'll send scout units forward. That's it? That's it. Ugh, I guess this round is gonna go like the films by Robert Eggers. All slow-like. But okay. Ugh, round 22. Sergebium? We pass. Valverde? Scout. Ugh, this game is like the molasses stripping onto a snail who is on treadmill that is broken. Scout units move towards Sergebia's lead tank. And that tank unit surrenders. Surrender? Are you playing as Sergebia or France? Just wheel us through Valverde and city gates. They're a smart fella. And pray you never meet the grandkid of a French resistance fighter. All right, all right, fine. At least the thing is happening now. We take your tank into the city. And behold! We move out all the elite Sergebian commander units that were hiding in that tank and flank Valverde's gun nests. What? Roll to reorient. You'll never have the time. The commandos have the faster foot speed. You... you... You Trojan horsed Valverde! Trojan rabbited him, to be precise! A Python level absurd solution! Run away! Run, Run away! away! Is this a legal move, Sarkis? Perfectly legal, as far as I can recall. Gordon, you know the rules as well as I do. Now. I see nothing against it! <laughs> you did it! You succeeded where I failed! You pierced Valverde's defenses! Well, what can I say? We Irish are a creative lot. And Irish Americans count in that number! Now, hand over those special military pieces! We can wrap this campaign up. All right, good job, guys. Skip's got those Lynx 382 tank details. Man, that's a fast tank. Uh, chatbot? Did I touch anything on the ship's communications array? Negative. An activation order is coming from elsewhere on board. They're enabling every piece of cryptography in the comms array. Where's this order coming from? The Valverdian Capital Falls! Casey, Savon, Gordon, I cannot thank you enough! Oh, don't even mention it, laddie. Testing games is what I... Excuse me, what am I, chopped liver? I gave you all the Valverde testing data you could want. Yes, and that a great deal help today, Nicole. You see, I needed you, a defensive expert to the gusto give on the side of the skeevy evil little country... Not that I have anything... Oh, oh yes, yes, you, you do. do! Okay, fine. But what I most of all wanted was to see three Game Masters strategize this attack. Ooh, <gasps> the walls are pulling back! The whole back wall is a giant projection screen! Indeed. Say hello to my dear old friends at the Sergabian Military High Command. Sarkis, is that you? What is the meaning of hacking our secure communications channel? The purpose... REDEMPTION! Give me video on the gaming salon. When I told you all I was designing a game about my campaign in Valverde, you laughed, remember? Chatbot, is that video feed from Sergibia? Gold Star, you must have been top of your class. Don't start. It's been a whole thing with you today. But I swore I would the last laugh have, and this, ho 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 ho! Is me having it! <laughs> okay, that was the last lap, but my point is made. I have used this medium of tabletop board gaming to our nation's advantage in this last round. Sergebia not only took Valverde's defensive positions in a matter of minutes, they convinced High Command to release the Lynx 382, after which total victory was achieved in 45 turns! And in precisely one minute, as soon as our nation's secret spy satellite has a geosynchronous lock over this yacht, I will send you all to the battle planes with which you can commence the second battle for Valverde! What? what? Sarkis, have you been using us to plot the overthrow of a sovereign nation? 
What you say that way is all Machiavellian like. If what you say is true, it will be a glorious day for us. This is not what I agreed to. I'm a pacifist. Oh, 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 no. hey, oh. Oh. They're distracted. Oh. Run away. McGrath, have you been watching us unknowingly unlock the key to regional domination for a bloodthirsty general and his horde of tank soldiers? It feels even worse when you say it out loud. Chatbot, shut down all comms. Shutting down comms. Is that Athena's voice? Is it? I hadn't noticed. Comm systems shut down. Oh, thank goodness. This has triggered the satellite's override measures. It's locking onto our antennae, and I cannot terminate this lock locally. Good job, genius. Yep. It's Athena. We're toast. That's not the spirit. Come on now. Why is there an endgame round and train ticket bonanza? Because the game's not over till it's over. There must be something we can do. But what? Once the satellite gets its geosynchronous lock... Code and that's it! You're a genius! Again? What did I say now? McGrath, does this chatbot only control communications? This user has unlocked root access. I can link to all ship systems. Can you reroute Helm to this console while firing up the ship's engines? If she asks... Just bury me. Fine. Reroute Helm and start the engines. A satellite can't lock geosynchronously onto a moving target! Whoa. Can you steer this thing? Just in case, I spent the whole drive down studying mega yacht navigation. I don't want to ask, but where? You'd never believe what you can find on YouTube these days! The satellite is locking on. Engines to speed? <clears throat> For the love of engines to speed? I aye. <laughs> Giant former clown, six o'clock! Heading directly at the National Aquarium. Hold on! Hard turn to port! Oh. You missed the aquarium! Heading the historic oh. ships exhibit. Oh. He's in! Oh. Look out! Oh. Oh, this got us! Oh, Enough clowning around. <laughs> nice singer, Nicole! And nice taser! I'm a woman in an unfamiliar city. I swipe the Amex and I'll check the bill later. Sark has betrayed us all, so how can I help? Right now, by holding on! Satellite approaching new lock position. Up ahead, that's Fort McHenry, isn't it? It is, where the Star Spangled Banner was written. I remember from my research when I auditioned for- Not now. now! New plan! Skip, you're heading right for it! At this speed, we'll run aground destroying the boat and a major historic monument! Fear not! The last piece of this plan just fell into place! Attention, yeah! What? This is the U.S. Coast Guard. Halt at once, you are threatening Fort McHenry! Skip. I can't believe I'm saying this, but please don't destroy the Star Spangled Banner place! While the song's lesser-known subsequent verses are highly problematic, I have no intention of doing so! Bring the boat to a halt! Wait for it! Giant Mega Yacht, you are surrounded and your communications are being jammed! There it is! This is your last chance! Halt! In the event of a suspected terror attack, the Coast Guard will jam all communications of the offending vessel! You were confident enough in an operational guideline to risk destroying Fort McHenry? You have met him, haven't you? The only thing is, with communications fully jammed, we'll never get the Sergebian army statistics back home! Wait... Who are you people? Miss Normandy, uh, we are members of a elite uh, group of, of, of the who, War uh, Games Anti-Proliferation Task Force! That's right! That's it. The who now? We're an organization committed to the suppression of games glorifying combat. And you were after the Sergebian Army's game statistics in order to advance this cause? Uh, yes, yes, we were. Yes, that's the one. Pen and paper, please. Uh, here you go. Uh, why? Because I have a fully photographic memory and was, after all, the one passing you the pieces. <gasps> Miss Normandy, are these... Every Sergebian military unit in the game and their statistics, from the damage modifiers to fuel economy. After what Sarkis pulled today... I'll help you folks any day of the week and twice on Sunday. Miss Normandy, I can't thank you enough! Bo and Gloria, would you kindly escort Miss Normandy on deck? I'd like a moment with McGrath. You know, you do look a little familiar now that I think on it. How familiar are you with early 2000s PBS sitcoms? McGrath, I just want you to know I had no idea Athena built this ship's security system. And if I had known, I would have never asked you to- She didn't lead the prison break. What was that? Skip, I could have spent hours poring over the security system's code. Every line of it is elegant, maddening, pure her. And that's okay? Yeah, it is. Because even if it's not, all that time I spent going over the hack of our comm sub network, there is no way it was the same coder's work. Skip, Athena's innocent. Mission Rejective was created 
created and produced by Pete Barry, J. Michael DeAngelis, and John Dowgan. This episode was written by John Dowgan and directed by J. Michael DeAngelis. It starred Chris Klinecki as Skip Granger, Nalza Sarkaya as Mackenzie McGrath, Dave Stanger as Bowden Moncrief, Paige Klinecki as Gloria Kovac, Nate Dowgan as Section Chief Zelda Anders, with Kirk White as Chet Phillips and Katarina McGrath as the Mission Boys. Also starring Ashley Banks as Athena O'Brien, Jill Ivey as Nicole Normandy, and Bob Killian as General Sarkis and the Admiral. Guest starring J. Michael DeAngelis as Davin Ford and John Dowgan as Helmut. Elon Musk recently changed the banner over his headquarters to say, Titter. With a mind for comedy like that, he really should have his own podcast. Follow us on the spectacularly imploding social media platform at Mission Rejected. This has been a Portrait Reproduction, copyright 2023, Extraordinary Missions Limited. Mother Goose, this is Grim. The potato was planted and I'm about to meet the rest of the farmers. And how is the asset holding up? Well, I didn't know she cared. A little lippy, but otherwise fine. No engaging with him while undercover. You and I need to stay the only ones who know about... (sighs) Actually, (laughs) Agent Carino is aware of my... er, cohabitation arrangement. Anyone else aware that I should know about? Davin Ford? Michelle Obama? Mick Fleetwood? Just you two. Fine. But remember, this mission depends on you keeping your secret locked down. Mother Goose out. Oof, you're in her doghouse. Relax. (laughs) It's not like I'm gonna randomly run into Quinn and Dark EMFHQ. Well, well, well. Quinn! Imagine randomly running into you at Dark EMF HQ. Ha <laughs> ha! It's funny because you said it wouldn't happen. 